Chapter 9, The Street Corner I spent lots of days, weeks, months, and years engaging in activities on street corners. Most of my crucial moments were experienced on the corner. The corner became like a home for me. I felt like it's where I belonged. Everyone on the corner felt that way. Before I was present on the corner, there were many others who had already decided to make the corner a location of residence. My own blood relatives at times ostracized me. They disowned me. They clearly showed they didn't want me around. But when I showed up on that corner, I received plenty of street respect from all other hooligans and thugs. We may not have been biologically connected, but they were family to me. We did everything together. The corner is where I made my first drug transaction with the addict. The corner is where I was able to identify with the good and the bad police officers that patrol the area. The corner is where I bought my first gun for protection. The corner is where I fell into my feelings for a female and experienced my first heartbreak. The corner is where I had my first fist fight. The corner is where I first got arrested and was booked inside of a county jail. The corner is where I first saw a man get shot. The corner is where I have seen violence in dice games gone wrong. From the views of the corner, I have seen real life gentrification and gang wars. The corner is where I committed my first misdemeanor and my first felony. A lot of my nights were spent inside of abandoned buildings or parked cars just to go to sleep. I was running up to any car attempting to sell drugs for money because I was hungry and I was homeless. The police officers would be lurking around the neighborhood at nighttime. I would be so paranoid that I'll throw all my drugs and whatever else I may have had on me under some nearby bushes. I would duck and hide behind abandoned buildings and trees. It is crazy now as I look back and write about these horrible experiences. It's like I am envisioning someone else and not myself in the past. Sometimes it is hard for me to believe what I have endured. But when I put our creator in the picture, I can see that he had plans for me. I have never been the type of person trying to impress other people. Unconsciously, I influenced many people in the wrong way. I just kept on doing what I knew best, and that was to continue to hang on the corner. I felt like I was in a position hard to escape from. Being on the corner at five in the morning, watching the cars ride by, the corner sometimes felt like a remote place to me. Now, in those early hours of the day, I was invisible to the people that rode by in their cars near the intersection. People were in a rush. Women were fixing their makeup in their mirrors. Men were looking frantic as if they were about to be late for work or something. It was clear that life was an emergency to them. When a few hours went by, people slowly emerged back to that corner. As the sun rose, the corner became live again. Every day, there was nothing but drama on those corners. The corner had my stress levels to a 9.5 on the Richter scale. The corner shook with negativity and violence. We were young, lost, and looking for a way out 
of the world of jungle, we behave just like wild animals, reacting off animal instincts. On the corner angles, you have the intersections and stoplights. You have red, yellow, and green lights are to control the traffic, right? Well, this was somewhat how we operated the corner when it came to the corner rules. For example, if I had drugs on me and one of my clientele's or regular customers drove up in his car to buy some drugs, I would always look both ways before I proceeded up to the vehicle. If you don't take caution of your surroundings, you can get hit or caught by the undercover officers. This was like the red light. When I spotted a police car, my actions were freezing. When I was in the clear, I paused just like the yellow light. Then I would proceed to move forward like a green light. Now, it was safe for the transaction to take place. It was time to get back to the dirty hustling. This is what I experienced every day. There were times when I felt something bad to happen. And so I would leave the corner to go to a different corner to hustle. I would come back later in the day and someone had already been shot or stabbed. People act normal as if nothing ever happened. It was just another situation that went down on the corner. I was resilient to these things. I was very resilient. Everyone maintained themselves. I never felt shocked by the loud sounds of an ambulance, police sirens, or gun gunshots from a AK-47. I never considered myself to be one of those psychic people, but I felt clairvoyant. The corner was a dangerous place filled with dangerous people when pushed to its limits. Everyone tried to make money, and money brought evil when enough of it wasn't flowing to the corner. When you live a certain way, you are only rushing yourself into an early casket. I talked to people on the corner one morning, and by the end of the day, he or she was no longer living. A lot of my friends from the corner are still incarcerated from 25 years ago and will spend the rest of their natural life behind those barbed wire fences. They will live in a controlled environment for the rest of their life. They will no longer see the stars, the moon, or their loved ones when they want to. The corner was all they were familiar with before the judge handed out those life sentences. Lots of talent was wasted on that corner. See, this is what happens when there is no leadership in the communities. I wasn't taught the harsh realities I was to face as I grew into adulthood. I wasn't educated on things such as safe sex. Thank God I missed contracting any disease while dealing with females on that corner. I only disease I contracted was the emotional, mental, and spiritual disease. Repeat, the only disease I contracted was the emotional, mental, and spiritual diseases. I was no better than a wild animal that reacts off instinct. I was living on the animal level of existence, of things. I had to learn the hardest of ways because I didn't take heed of the messages brought to my attention. They went through one ear and out the other. Through all the negative, I knew I had to do better.
but I never knew where to start. So many others on the corner with me were the same way. When I got older in age, I carried many unhealthy habits that I fought daily to get rid of. One of those bad habits was believing that I didn't deserve better. Certain strongholds held me back. A stronghold to me is nothing but false beliefs. Prison became my place of residence. Our creator took me from that corner and placed me into a controlled environment. I learned how to control myself a little better, but my mind was still developing out of ignorance. Many of my associates were returning to prison after revisiting the corner just to hustle. I used to think about how we would be sitting around inside of a drug house, looking at each other, drinking alcohol, and looking dumbfounded after one of our friends was gunned down in the streets or caught some type of sexually transmitted disease. So many things were hidden too close to home. Sitting around drinking and smoking, you know, just wasting time. Slowly, one by one, someone on the corner was either being killed or sentenced to prison. It was unreal to me how people around me started disappearing from that corner. All my obstacles were my life. The corner wasn't my life as I thought it was. The corner was my experience to be taught lessons for my wings to get stronger. Prison or the corner don't define who I am today. I am just a child of God. We are all his children. Different pedigree, but one spirit. Accept life for what it is and love what you now have. If you are not trying to replace old bad habits today, then you are going to deal with them in the future. Unexpectedly, when you are getting your priorities together. The Corner.